And our next segment, uh, we'll be talking about the digital asset approach. And we've got CEO Yuval Ruse with us uh, talking about uh, what's going on at DA. Um, I'm hoping that he'll uh, be able to uh, recap some of the most recent announcements that have been made. Hi, Yuval. We'll see you here. Welcome. Well, I think, I think you're you on mute. mute. Hello. Hopefully we'll get Yuval speaking. It looks like he's all right. Hey, Yuval. We see him. He's got a lot of books behind him. Looks like he's getting stuff up. Can you all uh, hear me now? Oh, there he is. Yeah, I can hear Welcome, you. Welcome, Yuval. We had a little bit of technical difficulty. We saw you. There's a lot of books behind you, but we couldn't hear you. So welcome. Yeah. And thank I will you. have to say, we have to thank you for being the uh, most challenged of all of the speakers today. You've rung in at 3 a.m., so we really appreciate it. That's dedication. No worries. No worries. <laughs> Great. Well, we're going to kick off doing? with um, asking you, could you recap a little bit? And I know you are, you know, obviously deep partners with Hyperledger and a number of other um, technology partners. Could you talk a little bit about recent announcements you've made that DA is uh, solving for and really sort of, you know, taking the next step of enterprise blockchain? Yeah, and I want to I wanna, uh, continue on, on the theme that we just heard from Adam, which is what we hear from clients is they want to make sure that when they're building blockchain applications, the access controls and who's allowed to change what data under what scenario is really what's critical for them. So we, we share that view and, and therefore we took the approach uh, that till today in enterprise blockchain, you had to bet on technology before you even started building your application because if you wanted to build on Hyperledger Fabric or Sawtooth, those two applications would look significantly different. And as you're seeing more and more companies entering the space, we're seeing um, uh, business decision makers being nervous. Are they going to make the wrong technology decision? And, and that's why we took a very different approach by creating DAML, which is a smart contract language that allows you to develop blockchain applications without having to decide which blockchain you want to deploy these applications on. So you could, uh, the example that Adam gave uh, using Sawtooth today, but what happens if in a year from now, there's a new blockchain that uh, does a much better job than Sawtooth? Does it mean that you have to redo your entire business? That doesn't really make sense. So we took a different approach by allowing businesses to build their product, describe the business that they want to put on a blockchain, and then today decide whatever blockchain they want. And in a year from now, if they wanted to switch, they could switch it without having to change even one line of code. That's great. And I think there's something, you know, you and I had a conversation a little while ago about uh, some of the challenges that big enterprises have, which is they have legacy systems. So if they've got something that needs to be part of a business process, they can't just rip it out. Um, and what does, you know, DAM will do? It allows you to keep that database and actually, you know, then add other composite parts that have blockchain. Can you talk a little bit yeah, about that's, that? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, first of all, um, that is co business continuity and integration, generally speaking, is where we see a lot of these projects hit uh, walls. And one of the things that we're extremely focused is how, first of all, all the tools to allow to integrate into existing systems. Another component is that a lot of people um, are not ready to migrate into blockchain, yeah. but they want to make sure that when they uh, innovate yeah. and they upgrade, upgrade their systems, uh, they are future proofing themselves. So we actually have a bunch of clients that are deploying on legacy technology. So centralized databases, but are building the application uh, that look like blockchain applications with full intent that in a year from now they will be able to migrate so they're actually starting to migrate some components of their stacks to look like distributed applications even though they still run on what you would call legacy technology so it, it's it's multiple it's multiple areas where it's important when you are coming into an enterprise ecosystem one is first of all having the ability to uh, connect to enterprise buses uh, be able to communicate uh, in financial services with all the different types of messaging to be able to ingest them. Uh, and then also be able to run on existing technology and not uh, mandate that an enterprise <laughs> move all of their uh, infrastructure to this new technology. 
uh, because then in many cases, you will have to wait for many years uh, for them to upgrade. They're, they're just getting their hands around moving to cloud. Um, these things do take time. Yeah. Hi, Yuval. How's it going? Lovely to see you. And I'm really impressed by your books. Um, what an amazing library. Um, Thank you. I, I just wanted to ask, I wanted to ask about um, the, the really big infrastructure project that you're doing with ASX. Uh, the Australian Stock Exchange, for people that don't know, is an amazingly ambitious project. Um, and I just wonder, I mean, I think some of these things have been pushed back a little bit. Um, um, I just wanted to get an update on that. Is that it, has that been pushed back a wee bit because of maybe the COVID thing? I mean, I think DTCC pushed back their thing because of Brexit. So, um, you know, they've probably gone back in time, I would imagine. But anyway, yeah, um, is that what's the update on that, the status on that? Yeah, so um, I think the ASX uh, came out with an uh, announcement recently that uh, they uh, need to talk to the market due to many reasons uh, that uh, some participants have asked them uh, to re-engage on what is the production date. I think that the thing that is most notable in the announcement uh, that didn't get uh, enough coverage is that actually the move into production testing which is really uh, showing when the platform is ready and the application is ready, is still targeting uh, July. So I think that uh, these things, um, um, especially when you're talking about a project like the ASX, which is talking about moving an entire country infrastructure, uh, requires coordination with many, many participants. Uh, at least when I think about it from a digital asset perspective and from the technology perspective, the technology is, is going to be ready and it's going to be able to serve the Australian market uh, whenever the Australian market will decide that it's ready to start uh, moving into this technology. Uh, and those are two different uh, components. Mm -hmm. But but yeah. just to, to re-emphasize, um, the Australian market have already had uh, six drops of the software uh, that they have been testing. Uh, so I think that I think that uh, especially in enterprise blockchain, people looking for uh, the headlines rather than uh, look at the actual work that is being done and tested. But, you know, it is a Coindesk uh, event, so we, we need to talk about headlines. <laughs> Are you, I'm guilty of that, right? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, if, um, if I may, if I may uh, jump in here, I was going to say, you've all, we just had Adam Kaplan from Salesforce. And I don't know how many people know that in your last round, Salesforce Ventures actually le uh, co-led uh, your Series C. And, um, you know. Yeah, so, so Salesforce know, Ventures uh, uh, did, did uh, uh, participate in the round. And, and that's why I think that some of the things that Adam say really resonate with me. I think it's more of the vision of what are the things that are needed for enterprise blockchain. And again, the, the, the approach that we took a digital asset is rather than if, 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 if we take a step back and we think about what blockchain wanted to do in the early days in, in you know, 2013, 14, when we started talking about it, was to break data silos. But if you start thinking about what enterprise blockchain did is it bifurcated, it just created slightly bigger silos. Uh, you know, nobody's solving for interoperability. Everybody, you have to use your own language to develop on a specific blockchain. And I think yeah. our vision was to bring and really create this one uh, uh, data data uh, that could be shared across blockchains, across databases. So, so the strategy of making demo work on other ledgers really uh, resonated with uh, big tech companies. So Salesforce participating, Samsung also participated. Uh, we'll have an announcement of, of uh, additional investors that, that came in. But really, this approach of, of working together with, with uh, big tech companies and integrate the language into their product uh, uh, resonated. And then just recently, we, we made uh, some announcement on uh, additional blockchains in China, uh, which, as we all know, has had a pretty strong push towards blockchain uh, that are integrating into Demo. Wow. Thank you, Yuval. I think uh, there's a lot of going on at DA, and we look forward to the upcoming announcements and uh, your continued success. Thank you so much, Sander. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, Yuval. Thanks, Yuval. Thanks.